Hi everyone, welcome to my channel, I'm Jan and uh, in this video I want to tell you a little bit about my background and uh, I think uh, for many of you would be very interesting uh, to find out about my life in USSR because I was born in the Soviet Union and uh, I spent my childhood in that wonderful country. So, um, as you know, I've decided to make a little bit more of the videos of my travels and I want to share with you my thoughts about other countries, where I went, where I liked the most, what I didn't like. In some countries I used to live for a month, two months, three months and years. Some countries I visited for just one, two weeks and even one day. So, in total it's about 40 plus uh, countries and... Uh, but before that, of course, uh, I wanted uh, to tell you a little bit myself, so you would know uh, where I come from, okay? Because a lot of you are interested in Russia and Russian culture and traditions, so that's why I thought I will start uh, my tales, let's say, from the uh, beginning, yeah? From the beginning, from uh, life in uh, USSR and Russia. So, yes, uh, some of you might think now, oh my god, how old she is, okay? <laughs> I'm not going to tell you guys, but I think you will have a good guess uh, of my age. But um, I was born in USSR. And yes, unfortunately, I did not uh, have much time of enjoying living in that country. Because uh, afterwards it was collapsed and we had perestroika and uh, USSR disappeared. So, but uh, let's start from the uh, beginning and uh, my parents, uh, they are from uh, different countries now. And actually previously also they were from different countries and they met in Soviet Union. My uh, mom is... Uh, her roots are going back uh, to Poland, okay, and some uh, of her relatives from Russia, and uh, we don't know exactly, because as you might not know, but when we had, before revolution, right, we had uh, high society, nobles, and uh, a lot of them were either sent away from Russia, so who could run away, and who didn't run away and decided to stay in the country still, they were all called enemies of the state and a lot were killed, sent to prisons or sent to Siberia. So, um, and obviously, so that's my part of my mom's part, uh, some were hiding from what background they had. So that's why I have no idea. The roots are finished at some point there. And uh, of course they burnt all the archives. Maybe there are some archives hopefully still left and I will try to find out uh, a bit of my background. But I don't know if it's possible at all. So, and, and, um, so another part of my uh, mom's family, you see, they were called as an enemies and taking everything from them and so that's how they end up in Siberia. So my mom was uh, born and raised in Siberia and my dad is from the other part of uh, USSR, he is from Caucasus but also I have no idea exactly what his roots are because it's also a mixture of um, different uh, uh, nations in him and roots, so uh, his family uh, used to live in Georgia and so he went to Siberia as a uh, uh, Soviet army uh, soldier and so he met my mom well so at that age uh, very young so that's where they met and uh, they decided to leave uh, they uh, homes, so he didn't come back to Georgia, mom didn't want to live in Siberia, and they decided to go to Saratov, is uh, the town, which is um, kind of like southern part of Russia on the Volga River, and I'm like saying you should really go to Moscow, and my mom says, well, Moscow even th those days was really, really hard uh, to get to university, to find place to live, because relatives, we didn't have any relatives anywhere there, and so it was really hard for them. So they decided to go to Saratov, because I think somebody was already there from dad's family, and they decided uh, to get to universities would be easier in that town. So, to be honest, yeah, when I look at um, uh, the pictures of the old Saratov, uh, even I remember it when I was a child in the 80s, it was very beautiful, it was very green, very clean, 
cultural and educated because we have lots of theatres and lots of universities so it is a student uh, city too and uh, as you can see it's very very looked very very nice so of course I understand they fall in love with the city and they enter to universities my mom entered to uh, a university uh, where they teach you how to be a teacher okay not sure how to say it in, in English, that's why, sorry guys, it's uh, like uh, teaching university. And my dad went into the uh, university for lawyers, okay, so let's say that. And so he became afterwards a policeman and uh, mom uh, became a teacher. And uh, so while they were still students, um, they didn't have any place to live really, they were living from, they were like renting one room or another room and then ended up uh, after all in a, a hostel for the families where they had to share uh, a um, kitchen with uh, another 20 families and share the toilet with 20 families and uh, bathroom or using the public uh, bath so those were quite interesting times for them and so at that time I appeared Okay, so I was born in Saratov, so, and still during USSR times. And um, I had the most light and wonderful childhood uh, at, um, at that time. So, of course, uh, I had kindergarten, went to kindergarten, my mom was also working there just for the first uh, time while she was still studying and looking a little bit after me in kindergarten and I had lots of friends and we were then growing uh, a lot of uh, going outside when we started to go to school obviously and uh, it was always a, a street uh, life okay so we didn't have any internet we didn't have any um, computers any phones even like absolutely nothing no communication except just the street street and friends and we were playing uh, different games, all the street games, we were jumping, we, we, we played with the balls, we were running after each other, uh, we had uh, a lot of fun. Yeah, uh, I went to school, of course, and uh, we still had, uh, as, a, as USSR, I was Oktyabryomak, uh, it's the first stage before you become pioneer and komsomolets. I have never became Komsomolis, so that, that part, uh, it was gone before, but I, I ended up as a pioneer. And uh, when, we, when we were Oktybrionak, uh, we were also, it's already like the, the, we were taught at school that we should be very friendly to each other, we should not uh, be scared of being hard workers, uh, learn a lot, uh, respect the elders, uh, like and respect each other, be very friendly to each other and also uh, like learning all of this straight from the beginning of course a lot of patriotic uh, posters we, we had and uh, the books were very patriotic of course that we were living in the most wonderful country in the world the best country the biggest country the friendliest country we didn't have any racism they were teaching us to like everyone no matter what color your skin, your eyes and which other Soviet Union country you are or other country and uh, so we did we, we were not uh, taught that uh, we should be not friendly to anybody else even uh, with US uh, when they were telling us they were not telling us that there are enemies the US is the enemies so it was more like there are bourgeois, bourgeois we call it bourgeois so the bourgeois are bad guys who are not very good to the good guys who live in America and uh, they were teaching us that, uh, telling us that not everyone could have go to school in America, not many people had jobs, not many people had homes, they were homeless and had a bad life because of those bad guys. And uh, so we had posters like this and I remember and we, I remember how we were like saying and we were so sore and feeling for all of those people and that's how they're saying well you see but in Russia in, in USSR we didn't have this problem everybody has a free uh, school free medical care uh, everybody has jobs everybody has homes so that's how we learned uh, how, that how we taught, we were taught in, in USSR back in my school days and when we became pioneer exactly the same. Uh, that's how it, it was during USSR times. So we had like very bright uh, childhood, 
uh, we had no worries, we didn't think about any enemies, the wars or anything else. We just felt that we should bring uh, peace to the world, we should build a um, friendly country and uh, respect everyone. So that's how it was, guys. Like I'm saying, you see a lot of you saying that in USSR times, uh, US had a bad impression about USSR, that we are the enemies and everything else. You see that otherwise in USSR, they didn't teach us that US is the enemy. The only they were teaching us and telling us that there are some people there and those people are not very good uh, to the other people. Guys, and then uh, it was somewhere until the middle of 80s, closer to the end of the 80s, when our country started to collapse and uh, we started to feel it, right? Of course, I was still young and I couldn't understand what was happening and uh, the only what started to ha um, happen is the empty shelves, yeah? We had empty shelves in the shops. We had no food, we had no clothes, nothing. And uh, we had to queue, even though they saying, oh yeah, no, we were not starving. Well, we didn't have enough food and we used to eat just pasta and uh, nothing else. We had to stand in queues for days to get a little bit of eggs, a little bit of chicken and uh, we had um, uh, like like food food stamps, I think you call it. It was only allowed like so much pasta, so much sugar, so much uh, tobacco and we didn't smoke, luckily, so we were exchanging tobacco for other food and uh, that was like uh, a really uh, strange time for many people nobody could understand what was happening because uh, it was like um, nobody could think that it's going to collapse like you know everybody just like everything is great everything is wonderful but okay maybe it's just a little bit of uh, times of concern and uh, but eventually yeah and before we actually had a uniform at school and uh, well, personally, children didn't like it. I think parents liked it a lot because they didn't have to worry about buying the new clothes, but we didn't like it much. And then, of course, uh, when USSR started to collapse slowly, we started to get a little bit more movies uh, from abroad, from US. And uh, in those movies, it was quite a mixture of uh, things. Some bits of so good life and some bits of the bad life. And, uh, of course, we wanted to have something similar of the good life. For example, we started to have chewing gums, like the first chewing gum I remember was Ribley Spearmint, then we had Turbo and uh, Turbo had like a little uh, pictures of the cars and we were absolutely like it and exchanging it between us, the children, and then of course we had an influence of uh, the clothes we had, we started to have um, leggings for the girls, like little colors, leggings, jeans and uh, uh, well, at the end of the 90s, sometime we started to, men started to walk around in uh, sports costumes and the trainees and uh, big chains, but that was already when Perestroika started. But before that, uh, so still, uh, you know, they, they, they started to open the borders. Can you imagine that, uh, yeah, it started all to fall? slowly and open slightly borders and uh, we finally got to find out that we had a relative in America. So we had an interesting story, like I'm saying our, fa our family has very interesting stories <laughs> and uh, uncertainties. So we find out about our uh, relative which is uh, my grandmother's sister. Okay, so uh, before, uh, when the World War II started, they used to, before that, I told you, yeah, but they have to be the roots in Poland somewhere. And so that's why I don't know the story if my grandma already married to a Russian guy and they left or something like that. But my, uh, her sister stayed still in uh, Poland somewhere. And then when Germans entered, they collected all the youngsters from the place where they were living and took them to Germany. And that's how she separated from the whole family and nobody knew what happened to her during the war. And of course after war also they had no news because we had an iron curtain. So we couldn't find out. But she was looking for the family all those years and the moment the borders collapsed and uh, she could finally uh, reach out and uh, come and meet us. Unfortunately my grandmother already died by then so only a few years. It's so sad they, didn't, they have never met. 
So she went to see her grave, she met us and she went to Orenburg and see my other part of family. Uh, uh, her part of family, she had another two sisters and a brother. And uh, actually in summer, like during USSR times, before collapse, we always were going with my parents to uh, travel, uh, like going to Orenburg to our family, going back to Siberia, Krasnoyarsk to my mom's family, then going to Georgia to my dad's family. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, we've been like not all the time sitting at home, so we had uh, a quite nice uh, life in USSR, that's what we thought. And so um, she, she went and saw all of us and uh, invited my mom and me to America, to Florida. That's where she ended up uh, after war because she got married a American pilot. So guys, that's an interesting story, right? And uh, you probably didn't even think, oh my god, <laughs> so many interesting things. Yes, and uh, yeah, you know, I was like, oh dear, I'm going to America. It's like, you know, started, it just like we started to watch all those movies. And uh, I was like, yeah, I'm going to... I started to imagine how I'm sunbathing under the Floridian sun. I'm swimming into in the uh, swimming pool and then... Instead, I end up in Siberia. Yeah, so my mom couldn't take me, and so she went to America without me. I uh, was not actually upset, you know, because I was like, ah, you know, I'm having my friends here in Siberia because, like I said, we've been traveling all the time previously every summer, and I was missing my friends there. We didn't have any communication except just sending the letters to each other, you know, paper letters, proper letters, and I didn't like that because I hate writing. So handwriting <laughs> and uh, yeah, I was like, okay, it's the I, I absolutely love to go to the forest, mushrooms, uh, nuts out there, and of course again uh, street uh, life and games with my friends and uh, winter and uh, we were. Uh, going from the slopes, you know, like the winter slopes, I forgot what you call it, uh, the special things that take you down to the slope, and I end up with the broken leg. So that was a little bit of the downside, <laughs> instead of swimming in the swimming pool, I end up with a plaster on my leg and sitting at home for a month. So I know what quarantine is, guys, and it was like really hard because no internet, no TV, no phones, nothing. My friends are all at school, so I was just like on my own. And I didn't know what to do. We had a TV, but only two channels. And of course, no movies there, no uh, cartoons, nothing. And I had a leg, I couldn't go out. So, yeah, to be honest, I had a really wild childhood. I had uh, some more broken ribs previously, broken tooth, and I nearly lost my eye. Uh, yeah, and I nearly cut my finger. So, yeah, so that was, I had fun. You see, that's what that's the, the, the fun of uh, when you go and... and uh, play around outside. So, but at that time I started to read a lot of books and that's where I got my love for books. I read a lot of, lot of books afterwards in my life, uh, before the all the gadgets started, <laughs> AP and internet. And I read all the books from my auntie's collection, she had a lot. And then the first time I was introduced an English lady, can you imagine? And yes, I got a Christie. In English, Agatha Christie. Uh, yes, Hercule Poirot. Um, I think the, the first one I read is was uh, The Death in Orient Express. And uh, uh, there's something I called that. Okay, Death of Ex Orient Express. And uh, that was the, the first and I remember it. Clearly remember it. I loved it so much. She had not really big collection. She only had a few books. And I was so upset why she doesn't have more. Because I... I uh, absolutely loved it. I mean, okay, we read uh, more other books previously and uh, like, you know, Three Musketeers and uh, Notre Dame de Paris, so it's like uh, French um, was more close to us because before USSR, you know, during Tsar times, actually French was the second language in Russia. So we have quite a lot of French influence back then and uh, so that's why we still had French books and uh, stories and movies and uh, they were made they were based on the French books but here is the English one and it was uh, like serious English one right uh, with the murder so and I was still at the age quite small but I quite enjoyed it so that's how I learned uh, about England and uh, I learned a lot about English people <laughs> so 
<laughs> yes, I learned a lot about English people and it was very interesting. So I started to be a little bit more interested in England and uh, yeah, what is it all about? Because we didn't know much just yet. So yeah, and um, uh, what you call it? And then in those days, to be honest, I have never ever thought that I will marry a British uh, Englishman and I will leave and I will be living in the UK. So yeah, those I could not imagine that to be honest. But um, that must be the first ring, okay? It was the first bell, <laughs> right? That I will be going to England, possibly. So that's guys, uh, my life kind of before the USSR collapse. And uh, I have, well, my mom, of course, returned from America. She took me back to Saratov and, uh, of course, uh, she brought some clothes from US and this is where it's like we got uh, our first video player to play foreign uh, American movies, you know, afterwards we started to watch movies like Terminator and uh, Schwarzenegger, Van Damme, Stallone and uh, Chuck Norris, Jackie Chan, it's like the, those were our favorite, absolutely favorite actors, we were just like watching those movies and it's like, oh my god, <laughs> that was a different life, completely different to what we used to. So uh, yeah, it's uh, completely changed in 90s and uh, it's a different story now, guys. So that's, I told you a little bit about my life during the USSR times. I hope you enjoyed uh, the photographs and some posters from those old days. Uh, the, a lot of pictures there are my, uh, from my... Uh, collection my mom had a lot of pictures they're still in russia some of them well, guys so that's it for now if you like the video don't forget to subscribe like and uh, i see you later bye everyone